And hello everyone, welcome back to another Love 2D tutorial. So in this tutorial we'll be covering the Love 2D configuration file. Now this configuration file is basically a file that allows us to configure application more, to maybe get certain permissions or to add certain features to the application. So Let's get started. So we just have a very basic application here. What goes on in here doesn't matter too much because we won't be using this a lot. So first thing we need to do is we need to create this configuration file. So you can just right click new file or you can open that folder it is in. For example, as you can see here, there's my main.lua file. Just create a new file and we can call it conf.lua like that. And now we have a configuration file. And inside of this configuration file, we can put a function. So function and then love.conf. And inside of it, we can just pay, put t. So t is basically a variable that's going to be passed in for us that will basically contain a bunch of information and stuff we can use. And then of course, this is just for love. And then here we basically say we want to manage the configuration for our application. So there's a lot of things here. For example, t.identity. And we can just make that equal to nil for now. This will allow us to assign a save file. I'm just going to also do this for now. So this will allow us to assign a save file. We can insert the path to that save directory. For example, saves or let's say data slash saves. like that. And in here we can just create a new folder called data and instead of that saves. Now we have a folder with the name data and inside of that folder named save. And there we can see that's the path to it. So that's just basically the saves directory. Not too much there. The next up we have, and of course you can add multiple things here. So I can continue at the, underneath this if I wanted to. And the next up we have things like t.version. And here you can set the version of your game. This is very useful because sometimes if you update your game, especially on Android, there are two things that can happen. One, you can install an entirely new application. Or two, that application that already exists will be updated where it is. That's what usually happens with applications and that's what should be happening. So here you can put like a version like 1.0.0 and I didn't do it inside of the quotation marks. Like this. And then how you can basically determine when you should update what here. It's up to you, of course. You can even add more things here like V1 and uh, Alice, TL or whatnot you want to add to this. But usually if it's like this, then you can just say for minor updates, like let's say you fixed a small bug, you can increase that by one. And let's say you maybe just updated the output. So there's just like a, so instead of it saying game over, it says game lost. That will make it two. So if every minor change, you can do this. Then with every major or a major change, but bigger change. So let's say you add a full blown menu system or full blown settings to your application. Like it's a new, it's a new path to your application. Like it's a whole new version almost. Then you can increase this by let's say one or two. And it, remember, it doesn't have to be small numbers. This, this could be like something like this and it's perfectly fine to make it very large numbers. It's, it doesn't have to be small values like we put in here, for example. And then once you have basically a change that makes this the version two or the version three of your game or like any major version of your game, you can increase this. So this means it's basically not the first version more is basically like the second version of the game. A lot of people also just like to do this just to keep it simple. They just use two numbers where if every major updates. So let's say, for example, and you implement a whole settings page for your game, they will increase this. And with every minor update, they will increase this. So let's say you added like a little title at the bottom in, uh, you can just add that or you added like another character that or NPC that doesn't do anything. Add one there like that. Or I didn't just mess around with it too much. I just put basic versioning in here. Let's actually keep this one here just for interest sake and remove that one. 
Then we also have t.console. And this is basically if a console should be attached to that game. And there should be a true or false value. So false means, which is it by default, there shouldn't be a console attached to the game. This is Windows only, take note of that. If you're on Linux or Mac, this won't really affect anything. But if you're on Windows, you might notice sometimes that there's like a little black box, this command line or CMD that pops up when you open up an application. That's the console. So if this is true, this means that the console should be running in the background and it will basically be attached to this window. So once you close the window, the console will close as well. Windows only though, so take note of that. Next up, let's say you want to save the files, but on an external storage. Like you want to save the files, but on an SD card, for example. Then we can say t dot external external storage all lowercase and false or this should be true then this means you want to save the files but you want to do it on the sd card and not on the normal phone storage and i do believe this is android only so take note of that i think this is android only so you should also take into consideration about this we also have t dot gamma correct is equal to true now this will basically in a sense if the system supports it it will enable gamma correct rendering i have no idea what that is but if the system supports it it will do that it will probably just enable better gamma or whatever i think gamma is like lighting or something like that yeah let me google, google that Yes, yeah, so it is the overall brightness of something. So the more bright it is, the higher the gamma, I guess. And yeah, it's, it's something like that. I don't usually work too much with that. I usually just do the basics in the configuration files. I wouldn't go for gamma correct unless someone specifically like gives an issue about the gamma being wrong or something like that. Then I would enter that. But usually I don't care too much about that. Okay, next, let's say you have you play like an online game. And let's say it's like a game like PUBG. On PUBG, you have the option to click a button and then it will hear your voice speak. So you can speak to people on PUBG by clicking the microphone button. We can enable that as well. Now, on Android, we need to basically get a prompt that allows us to hear the user's voice because you may have noticed if you want to talk to someone on PUBG, the first time you click on that button, it will pop up a prompt asking you if it can use your microphone. That's what we're going to do here. So t.audio.mic equal true. So if it's on Android and you want to enable microphone, then this will basically give them a little pop up asking, hey, can I use the mic? Cool. Now let's actually configure something we'll be able to see such as t.window.time and that should be window okay and we can just make that equal to whatever title we want for example cool ball game now if we were to love for this we'll get this right here which says cool ball game so that's this part right there so that would be the t.window.title we also have things like the window icon. You'll notice I have a little folder here, here with an icon inside of it. It's called gameicon.jpg. Usually you want to save these as ICO because that's an icon file, but I use the .jpg just because. So here I can just specify icon slash game icon.jpg now if I were to run that then you'll notice I have a little icon here now and that's this icon we got right here it's a very dark icon I should have picked something a bit lighter but as you can see there's a little icon there so that's to change the icon if you wanted to do that 
then you can by doing this. And you see it's an icon and a game icon. Take note, this path is kind of relative at the moment because as you can see here, if I were to move my conf file outside of this folder right here, so if icon was in a different folder, it would not find this icon here. So keep note that the location of where the conf is and where the icon is, that's very important. But we're not going to go too deep into that. That's something completely different you should have to worry about. You can also set the window width, for example, if we were to do this. And we can also set a height, so let's go like this. And you can say, will go away. Width. And here we say, height. And then all we need to do is specify the width and the height. For example, let's say the width should be 400. And the height should be 200. Which is, which is a very weird add ratio, but there you go. So the width is now 400, I believe, pixels, and the height is now 200, I believe, pixels. You can, of course, make this as big as you want. For example, 1200 by 700, which is almost a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, as you can see there, right there. So now it's a lot bigger. So it just depends how you prefer it. You'll also notice that if I were to just to go here again, that if I want to resize it, I can. So I can't resize it. So even if I wanted to, it just moves it. It doesn't resize it. And this is why default like this, because usually you don't want games to just be resized because that could break the game. But if you do want this to be allowed for your users, you can say t.window dot resizable is equal to true. Now the window can be resized. So if I were to bring it over here, now to go here, then I can resize the window. So it by default it is disabled and for good reason. But as I say, you usually do not want to enable this because that could cause the game to break. We'll notice in more popular games as well, you can't resize the window because it's dangerous to resize the window. You can also give it a minimum width and a minimum minimum height, which could be better if you have this resizable on. For example, if I can just copy this. And in here, instead of just saying width and height, we can just say min. And I'm going to copy that width there and just paste it here. So now I can set like the minimum width and height it's allowed to be. For example, let's say the minimum height it's allowed to be as 500. Whoa. And the minimum width it's allowed to be is let's say 1000. Now, even though it's resizable true, it can only be resized to a specific size. So here, if I were to resize it, as you can see, after a while, it doesn't allow me to resize anymore, but I can make it bigger, but I can't make it smaller. So it has like a minimum size it can be resized to if you want to enable the resizable. But as I said before, rather not. You can also remove a window border by saying t.window dot border less is equal to true. This will remove the window border, which I don't always recommend, but it's a good option if you want to allow your users to have that. Okay, so as you can see, it doesn't have anything up here. This should be optional if you want to put it in. You shouldn't force this onto the user because not all users like this. You'll notice with most games, you have an option to remove the borders. And that's a good, there's a good reason why there's an option to remove it. And usually by default, it's not removed unless it's by default full screen. You can also enable vSync. So vSync. And this you should specify with a number. I don't quite know what this number means, but you should specify with a number if you want it enabled. And here it is now vSync enable. If you don't know what it is, it's, I think it's vertical sync and it's to sync sound and and the video, but it's it should be optional because yet again, not everyone will benefit from vSync because it's by default it is aligned as it should be, but usually you don't worry too much about it. Okay, so that should also be optional for the user to change. You shouldn't force it on them again. And here is something that could possibly solve my problems. Display. Tell it on what display to appear. For example, if I say display one, it might actually, nope, it displays on that one. If I say display two, which is not my main display, then ah, it does appear here. So now what we can do 
But instead of me having to continuously drag it over to show you, I can now go here and I can make full screen. I actually didn't know this display was here. I just realized it, that it exists. Interesting. As you can see, it's full screen. And I didn't actually think this through because, you know, I can't really exit. But yeah, so that's if you wanted full screen. And I'm going to keep that there because that's actually very useful. I wish I knew that existed much sooner. You can also specify the X and the Y coordinates. So if we were to copy this and go here, then we can like say X and let's make this 200. I don't know if this is now going to go back to this screen because the displays are kind of linked. Okay, so now it's here. So the X is now 200, as you can see right there. If I were to make that less, so let's say 100, then it's 100 from the side here. So yeah. Then we also have Y. And let's make this 100 as well. So you can see 100, 100. So that's very useful if you want it to be at a specific location, but yet again, you might just want this if you want to save where the user last had the application when they closed it. That could be a good feature, but forcing a location, yet again, not always a good idea because that location may not exist on the user's monitor because let's say their monitor is smaller than yours and you set it to specify be on 500, 500. They might not have a screen, which is very rare, but they might, might not have a screen that size. So yeah, just keep that as note. This should usually be an optional thing you add. All right, so next up is something I do not recommend you play around with. It, it's, you, it's good to know it exists, but you should not be playing around with this. Uh, and, unless you know what you're doing, but usually you do not want to play around with it. You can disable and enable modules. By default, all modules are enabled in Love2D. But you can disable them if you don't want them. For example, t.modules dot and let's say timer is equal to false by default this would actually be true because the timer is enabled now this timer right here provides this dt here which is the time between this frame and the last frame so if we remove that module dt so if we make number here dt and then print that value dt would be zero so right there enough accidentally removed my one thing I liked. So as you can see there, it's zero. But if we were to, yet again, just remove that from there, and actually let's bring back our window display. I did kind of like that. So if we were to remove that disabling module, then as you can see, DT is a number. So just take note, you can disable modules, which I guess would probably decrease the application size or something, I don't know what it will really benefit in doing, but you can do it if you want to do it. So just take note of that. So usually don't, just don't disable anything, that's a good rule of thumb. If you know you're not using something and, you're not, and you know you're not going to use it, then I guess disable it, but usually you don't want to disable anything. Now, if you might have fallen behind or you want to maybe remember some of this, you can always find it here on the on the Love 2D website. That's where you can go if you still want to learn more about all of this that you can enable and disable and do in a configuration because there's a lot more to actually learn, but usually you don't have to worry too much about it. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and can now configure your game in Lua. And I'll see you all again in the next Lua tutorial. Thank <laughs> you.